let's see if we can actually define these terms aerobic and anaerobic first of all and the good news is it's well basic right so if we're talking about something that's aerobic guys we are talking about something that happens in the presence in the presence of oxygen i'll put o2 molecular oxygen so if it's aerobic it's happening in the presence of oxygen now i personally think we should be adding the word sufficient into here so i'm going to add that in as well that's the word sufficient i think i've just squeezed that in sufficient oxygen so if it's aerobic it happens in the presence of oxygen what does it mean then for anaerobic well no surprise for figuring it out this is in the absence of oxygen or specifically in the absence of sufficient oxygen so if we've got movements that are occurring sort of in a certain manner that can only occur in the absence of oxygen they would be generally speaking anaerobic and the opposite the case for aerobic now that's all well and good what we want to do is we want to be able to apply this okay and we we are going to spend some time and i chose four examples i thought they were sort of broad and representative and those four examples i'm going to call this one american football or gridiron we've got here gym so let's just gymnastics i call that gym this one is os open water swimming and i'm going to consider this one to be air marathon uh, also by mo in this case so those are the examples that i'm going to give here and we're going to sort of analyze these so what if i was to say to you let me see if i can choose the same color the aerobic type activities they tend to be they tend to be long duration okay so which of those activities would you sort of pluck out as the two long duration activities now i want you to think about the episodes of the activity so for example how long does a play in american football last what is it eight seconds 10 seconds sometimes 15 often shorter right this is not long duration a gymnastics a vault very short a handful of seconds right i guess a floor routine longer these would tend not to be long duration but open water swimming this could be a good 120 minutes okay a marathon I mean it depends who's doing it but Mo's going to do that in something like let me let me be generous to him 130 minutes that would be a damn quick marathon to be fair I've done a couple in my time and trust me I didn't get anywhere near that okay so these are long duration activities the other thing about aerobic activities is they are moderate intensity now the word moderate I always find a bit awkward because it kind of is non-descriptive isn't it you could say low intensity actually the point we want to make here is that this swimmer here is not sprint swimming and this runner here mo is not sprint running they're they're moderating their their pace they're going gradually even though for us as non-marathon runners probably is pretty damn quick well what about in the absence of oxygen then well guess what we're talking now about short duration activities so short duration now a great guide if you want to sort of make a very broad generalization is anything less than three minutes so if it's less than three minutes guys this is the less than sign less than three minutes it's probably going to be anaerobic okay so short duration less than three minutes now there's a very specific reason we choose three minutes i'm not going to get into it here but it long story short it's effectively the it, it's what we call uh, the aerobic threshold point but that's a that's for a whole other level and we're also saying that it's high intensity so we have got now that our we have got now that high intensity short duration less than three minute activities tend to be anaerobic so we've got our vault we've got our american football which is very power strength type relation with our flexibility it's very power speed flexibility related right these are anaerobic nature activities but guys can i stress to you that all let me choose a different color than the two i've used as guides so far the all all movements use both okay all movements use both it is not that mo here is doing no anaerobic respiration he still is it's just the vast majority is done aerobically it's not that our gymnast is not doing any aerobic respiration it's just the vast majority is done anaerobically why because it's the absence of oxygen or for mo we had sufficient oxygen so that's why okay now you'll enjoy this last bit because we're going to finish off with some equations so i'm going to stick with my sort of blue theme here and we're going to talk about aerobic respiration can i stress to you guys that respiration means the release or the transfer of energy in biological systems okay so this is the release of energy please avoid terms like producing energy uh, please avoid terms like making energy please avoid, avoid terms like destroying energy we, we are releasing storing or transferring okay so that's what we want to be thinking about so what does aerobic respiration look like well first of all our first reactant little link there to your chemistry courses is glucose glucose in the presence of something we need sufficient levels of oxygen 
so there's our other reactant, can go to, and then obviously there's a few enzymes involved in this, we're not going to go into that here, but that's going to go to some products, and those products are as follows. We have the release of, let me actually, I'm not using symbols, let me actually write it out here, of carbon dioxide. So we have carbon dioxide. We have the release of water. Let me choose a different color. We have the release of water. Oh, sorry, we have the production of water. But we also, in this process, guys, get the release of energy. Now, you'll notice that I've kind of... Let me see if I can produce something that looks a bit energy-related there like that. Terrible, wouldn't it? Now, that equation there, guys, is really important to us. Now, we could put symbols in here, six, uh, C6H12O2, O2, CO2, H2O. No problem. You guys could balance it up in your chemistry knowledge. I'm sure you could do that as well. It involves lots of sixes, whole other lesson. But the point I want to make here, guys... In fact, i tell you what. I'm going to give you a little sort of general challenge. If I was to tell you... That glucose was that by the way this is a little tidbit this is not for your examination okay if I was to tell you that glucose is structured like that I'll just leave it for you to discuss with your teacher what the rest of this would look like in terms of symbols and whether you need to have any kind of balancing done here so that's that's for you but that energy here can be used for movement it powers movement it actually powers um, many all metabolic processes okay but the other point we want to make now is that our aerobic respiration, oh, sorry, our anaerobic respiration is now different. So let's go anaerobic respiration. So in the absence of oxygen, respiration being the release or transfer of energy. So what have we got here? Well, we've still got our glucose that's still present. And by the way, it's present in the cell. We also store glycogen in the liver, but that's a whole other story too. And we're going to say glucose without oxygen now goes to lactic acid lactic acid plus and we get the release of guess what energy okay so a couple of things i want to say here okay guys now obviously we've got absence of oxygen that makes sense we've got our lactic acid remember that this is fatiguing remember again your biology link here is actually negatively impacts on the on the enzymes that are working in the muscle. You guys know that denaturing from your biology studies. But this is actually going to slow us down and need to make a stop. But we can do that. So if we go back to one of the original points, guys, was guess what? This is high-intensity energy, but we can only do it for short durations. Why can we only do it for short durations? Because we have a fatiguing byproduct as well as energy being released. Now, to finish off, folks, this is what I want you to do. I chose four images. This one, of course, is going to be anaerobic. This one is going to be anaerobic. This one is going to be aerobic. This one is going to be aerobic. I would like you to go and assess as many moments, activities, sports, and assess whether they would be anaerobic or aerobic. And hopefully, you'll find that it's quite distinct, which one's which. But you'll also find some that are very much in between, like an 800-meter run or a 100-meter swim. Go and make your opinion, make your argument. And when you make your argument, you must state this, this, this. These are your arguments for why a sport is aerobic or anaerobic. Cheers.